Yep. Yep. Whoa, oh, it's big. And whoa, Jesus. Oh, he's really big, man. No, he's been bitten in half. No way. That's got to be one of the most sad things I think I've ever experienced in fishing. I want to chase that barramundi of a lifetime and I want to bring you guys with me. Whoa! Yep, there we go. There he is. Oh yes! Oh, that was sick! Oh my god. I was still holding some confidence that things would they would turn around if I kept persisting so that's what I wanted to do but I wasn't expecting for the next day to be so drastically different as the day we just had. Now I just wanted to give a bit of a heads up by the footage you're about to see. It's quite intense and in there's some super high emotion moments and you're going to see um, some of that emotion spill out. This is something I'm very invested in, I'm very passionate about. There's been a lot of hours of hard work, years of trying to catch that meter 20. I just thought I'd give you guys a bit of an insight behind the emotion that's a part of what you're about to see, which is honestly probably some of the most intense moments I think I've ever filmed. Yep. Oh my god, he hit it, man. No way, he hit it and spooked. He whacked that so hard. Damn. It's a good fish, man. How did he not hook out? <sighs> wow. What I've been doing is I've got this bit of a bank that comes and the current hits this corner and kind of wraps around. It's a bit of a, it's a little bit of a back eddy and there's a bunch of undulations in the, um, in the mud here. You can probably see them a little bit on the bank. It kind of goes up and down. They kind of just sit in those little divots. Here I've got the, obviously got the live pole in and I've got a little black spot there. It's a bit of a, a divot. And he was just sitting right in there. Oh, damn. Here's another one here. A little bit of a divot and you just got that fish sitting right there. Oh, right at the boat. Oh, it's big. Oh my God. Right at the boat. Oh, that is, oh my God. Come on, get up. Oh, biggest shark on him. Come on, get up. Get up. Oh, oh. No. I don't have my net ready. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, 
Danke dir. Na, danke dir. Oh, oh nein, mein Netz tangled. What the f***? What the f***, Bowie? Oh nein. Mein Netz tangled. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to untangle this thing. Um, I really don't want to put my hands in the water. This is f***ed up. No. I'm going to have to put my hands in the water. This is Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> no way. There's absolutely no way that just happened. Dude, I got the net. Oh, oh my god. Had the net tangled in the hook, man. I can't even see. Oh my god. Oh, bro. Oh my god, that was so sketchy. The net was just so tangled in the treble there. Lucky like it was hooked really well. And that right there, that is all day a meter barramundi. Oh yes. My um my camera actually died. What well, my top camera died before the I just got that hit, like literally that cast, and then, then the camera on my head just died as I got it in. That's pretty lucky. That could have been psycho. We'll check him on the brag mat so we get an idea, but he is definitely a meter. I don't think he's that 120, but he might even be 110, man. He's pretty big. Oh. 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 What are we looking at? I don't know. It's not as big as I thought. Oh, actually, hold on. Help I put him on the brag mat properly. He is 105. That's an absolute tank. Yeah, he got touched up by the. Whoa, Jesus! Ah, ah. Oh, yeah, definitely got touched up by the shark a bit. So that's part of what this journey is all about. Oh. 105 saltwater barramundi my first metery in like how many years like three years nine inch sicario <sighs> literally ate it right at the boat that was absolutely insane and the shark <sighs> the shark sitting right on him i had to go as hard as i could lucky he was right at the boat and i could <sighs> i think the shark got a little bit scared off about the boat but <sighs> oh whoa can't really hold him. <laughs> we'll get her unhooked and get her back on her way. Bit nervous about the shark situation, but I just, I don't really want to put my hands in the water. I'm a bit nervous. I might just put her in the net. Hopefully she, I can revive her a little bit. In, in any other circumstance, I would just hold her in the water, but I'm just terrified of sharks and she's gonna die if I just let her go straight away. There she goes. Come on. Swim, girl. Ah, there she goes. She just kicked off. Oh, thank God. Well, that was epic. There we go. After seven days, we got our first meter barramundi, 105, which is 
a new PB in the salt water for me. That's my biggest salt water barramundi. And that's really what we set out for on this, um, on this series. That's something I really wanted to do. And we had to take about 10, 15 minutes to try and revive that fish, but um, she swam off good. So confident she's gonna be all right. And I'll tell you what, there's a fair few fish still on the sounder. I'm gonna cast for a little bit longer, but I'm not too concerned about staying here only um, because of the shark situation, but man, I'm pumped. I'm absolutely pumped to get that fish. <sighs> We're getting closer. We get closer to that 120 mark now. <laughs> We're only 15 centimeters off. <laughs> this is the lure that did damage. Nine inch Sicario. It's had the hook pulled out the other side and <laughs> the leader is a bit chafed up. So we'll snip that off, retire, re-rig this properly and get back to casting. Well, it took about an hour and hour and a half of casting at these fish, but we um, we finally got the bite. I'm stoked. That's me done for today, really. Like, I don't I don't even need to get another bite. That was that was all you could ever ask for. Me to barramundi in the salt doesn't get much better. But it's only it's not even eight o'clock yet, and we've got a stack of fish still on the sounder. It's crazy because uh, yesterday afternoon I was contemplating not even coming today because I was. Had an absolute stinky yesterday, but I thought the tides are good. There's some bad weather coming, like in a couple of days time, I've got big Southeaster kicking in. So I just, you know, I said, you know what? We're just gonna do it. We're gonna make it happen. I'm gonna fish no matter what. And um, got bloody rewarded. It's a good feeling. <laughs> Go away. That's the shark right there I'm talking about. <sighs> da, da, da. And all there. Barra, 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 barra. Ah, it's very frustrating. Kind of scared to hook another one. Gonna have to go stupid hard on it. Yep. Whoa. Whoa! Come on, we gotta get him up close to the boat. Get him away from that shark. Ugh. Come on, come up. Ugh. Ugh. No, up, 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 up. No, over here. Come on. No, not on the boat. Come on, buddy. You don't want to be shark, mate. No. Oh my god. Come up. No, the shark. <sighs> could have netted him. Ah! Oh! Well, that was about another hour or so of casting. Hooked another what would have been probably a meter fish. Had him next to the boat, was about to net him. And then, 
you saw what happened. I just thought I had him. I thought I had the shark beat, but apparently not. It takes one little dive as I'm about to net him and then goes one meter down. The shark just absolutely mauls him. I, like, I, I have to move. I can't, you know, this fish here and they're big fish, but I just, I, I can't sit here. They're, they're just gonna, I don't want him to get killed by sharks. Very high emotions. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna um, pack up, move, go somewhere else, try, try find somewhere else. All right, now moved a fair bit up the river. Usually, further up the river you go, less chance of a shark encounter. So that's what we've done. We're just pulling up on this bit of a snag that we um, fished in episode one of the series. Oh yeah, also if you haven't seen the first two episodes, the link to the playlist will be in the description and it's also, if you just go onto my channel, there will be a playlist there, Chasing Giants, that's the one. If you watch the previous two videos, you'll get a bit more up to date on what's what's going on. So we've used the car and drifted back over it and that's the um, lay down there. You can see there's a stack of fish on this right side in particular. Oh, that was a bite, holy. Oh my god, he whacked it. No way. Ah, oh, damn. Bloody weedless hooks. Ah. Oh, again. What the f... I've had like three, four bites. None of them hooking up. Like how? How do you not hook up on that? I'm running it through the trees every time. Like I just can't have an exposed hook. in the tree. Oh, got him out. I think this might, I don't think this is a barrel actually. It might be a cod. Yeah, cod. Rip, 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 rip. Cod, god. Cod, god. See ya, buddy. Oh, big belly flop. How is it I get like three bites from a barrel from this lay down and then one fish that sticks is a cod. Unreal. One more cast of the snag and then we'll move on. I've noticed there's, there's a few fish out to my left side here actually along the bank. Same, similar to what we had earlier. Uh, they're sitting in kind of undulations in the mud. If those fish earlier bit, maybe we can get these ones to bite too. I've just never had the ones here bite. <laughs> yeah, got a good one right here. Same sort of deal as earlier. You see the little dark patches. That's the um, the divots in the sand. One fish there, one fish there. We'll try and hit that front one first. So we'll line him up. And put that out there. Got him! Got him! Wow! What the? F what is going on here? What the? F Oh, 
Oh, this is real weird. I think I've hooked a shark. Yeah, I think I've hooked a shark. Oh no. Free spool that for a second. I think a shark has literally eaten my plastic. <laughs> yeah, I can see him on the sounder there. Jesus. Ah! Well, that was bound to happen. Can't believe we stayed on for so long. Well, I think that's going to do us for the day, but we've got the next two days uh, back in the river here. We've got some great tides and uh, they're only getting better really over the next two days. So we only had a limited time. Wind's picked up and the fish kind of gone off the bite anyway. So don't think I'm missing out on too much today, but we'll definitely be back early tomorrow morning and see if we can get a couple more fish. So we're on the board. We've got the first meter barra of the series. And I think like going forward, the more and more I do this and the more frequently I do it, the more dialed in I get and I become more in control. I key into the conditions, what's going on in the areas that I'm fishing a lot more. And from all that, the confidence just grows and grows. I think definitely after that day, I really felt like, hey, we might actually be able to, we might actually be able to get this done. So going into the next two days where we had really good tides as well, I was very confident. All right, welcome back. It's the next morning. Got Benjamin with us today. Just pulled up on the spot and literally straight away, shark there and then a couple good barra on the side. So we're a bit up the river at the moment. It's just a bit windy out the front, so can't fish where we were yesterday, but there wasn't really the fish there anyway. We had a quick look. So we'll stop sides again there. Oh, there we go. Yep, yeah, right there. There's a couple. Uh, imagine if we just bang one first cast like this. Well, that's not a very good cast. That's not going to help me. Now, right, moving out of here, these fish, they just don't want to bite. Cowards, really. Just true cowards. All right, just pulled up on a couple more fish out to the side here. And I'm just going to try out this um, this little rig because we're not fishing the snag, we're fishing these undulations. Got the flick prawn rigged on a jig head with a little um, stinger on the chin there. See if I can boost up the hookup rate. One, one singular dog. I don't know, but I'm going to get it. Where are we? 15 meters. Not bad. Where's that land? Oh yeah, that might drift into the zone. Where's my lure? Yep, got him. No way. <laughs> I spotted one singular fish on the sounder. <laughs> Get the net. Spotted one fish on the sounder. Put one. He's got it so deep. One half decent. Well, not a half decent cast. It was a very good cast. I'm so chafed. Should probably back a little bit. Bring him to me. Hit him. Let's go. 
Oh yeah. Chunky. Ha. He's good. Ah, we got him. Ah. The prawn rig worked, man. The singular barra. Yeah, literally, he's good 90. Yeah, solid. Let's have a look at this prawn rig. If you, oh, he's got locked jaw. Open your mouth, Kelly. Yeah, that. Oof. Yeah, it's got him good in there. Yeah, he wasn't coming off. That's epic, man. What are we looking at? He is 90, 93 and like a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. What would you call him? Yeah. 94. 94, yeah. Well, there we go. Literally was just drifting these um little undulations. Sorry, a few fish on the side scan and put the live pole in. Just noticed one singular fish hanging on his own. And got a perfect cast right in front of his face. Couple couple twitches and he absolutely bopped it. It's a 125 mil flick draw that was right down there. Depending on that little stinger hook, that little stinger rig that I showed you. But yeah. Epic fish. Get him unhooked. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Just ran into the electric. There you go, I'll show you my little rig here that we had set up. The leader is shredded, that's why I use heavy leader. And how strong is that still? Yeah, got a lot of strength in that still, so that right there held up. It was very deep in there, but this is basically the rig. The traditional jig head, I took the rattle out of the front. Yeah, and then on the front, the little chin there, got um, two split rings and a size two decoy YS81. Two split rings just gives it a bit more movement, so if they twist, it doesn't get jammed and then bends hooks out. That's basically the little little rig right there. Got the job done. I'm just trying to catch fish here, man, you know? Right, where are we? There's a few more there now, eh? I felt my line. My line was rubbing on the bottom of the boat. No way. There he goes. Next cast. <laughs> I was like, oh, that felt like a bite. <laughs> Seven two cast, eh? Not as big. Very much smaller. Make it. Oh, oh rip. Get this guy in. <laughs> that was definitely a shot. It might have even been the barra hat on. Shark got him. That was. That's pretty insane. Chaos. I was like, oh, look at that barra jumping right in front of the boat. That's weird. What did you be crazy? I was just. Two barra. I was just like, excuse me. Okay, it's just a little, just a little barra in comparison to the last one. Same rig, literally the next cast that we first cast in. Ben's had like five casts while I was messing around with the cameras. No nibs, so I put in one cast. Nib. Dog, eh? <laughs> Alright, I'll get this guy back quick. Just spear him in, so he's, he's got to be very fast. Oh, that is pretty good. Now, unfortunately, we've got this guy right here hanging around us. That's the, um, that's the shark. Just kind of swimming around the boat now, so I don't want to um, I don't want to kill any more fish. So even though there's fish here and they're biting, well, there's not that many fish to be honest. But even though they're biting here, I think we're better off moving and um, just not getting them eaten by sharks. Basically, that's the strategy. It's sad to see. It's, it's very frustrating because the sharks just seem to hang out where the good barra are at. But <laughs> what do you do? Alright, so just been sounding for a good, uh, almost an hour, just having a look around. Just found a couple of fish that we're going to have a cast at. A few fish there on a stick, I'm definitely not throwing me special rig. Just switch back over to the um, little weedless version of the prawn. 
<laughs> throw that in this little stick in here. There's a few fish sitting there, ready to get doinked. Drop us back just a touch. It's running a little bit more than I thought. Yep. Oh, that was a barra. First cast in there. As soon as I switched to weedless, I'd get a bite and don't hook up. <laughs> For us, it's like the water's actually like moving this as much as it is. Like it's good, it's a good speed, but I thought it'd be slower. It needs to be like a money prize. Got him! I think this is a cod, man. Definitely a cod. Yep. You just know, that bite's just different. Ow, you bastard. Go away. Ow! It spiked me twice. Coward. Oh, man. There he is. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> that was a proper doinkus. Proper doinkus maximus. Oh man! Could have had him. Like, man, the hookup rate's been so bad with this bronze usually not so bad. Like, that's been crazy. I've missed like four bites today I should have had. Oh. It's cold and it's starting to rain, man. I can't handle it. It's pretty yuck. It's not ideal conditions at all. Yeah, look, the conditions have definitely worsened. Water temp is dropping, the bites are getting less frequent. Try and find some other fish a bit more active, because these ones just, they're not having a bar of us anymore. Got a couple little bites, but no hookups, besides a cod. Standard. I've just pulled back up where we caught those fish before. You see a couple of fish on the side skin. A little bit of a light shower going on at the moment, so I apologise if there's any raindrops on the lens. It's going to be very hard for me to keep on top of. Got him. Oh, he just popped off. Wow. How did he hit that and not hook up? He ate that so good. That was such a hard doink. Oh my god. Look, oh, it's chafed up here, bro. He had it in there. How does he eat that and not hook up like that? That is disgusting. Mint weather. All my lens looks as good as my sunnies right now. Alright, so the challenge here is to not hook the crab pot <coughs> and get the fish that's just behind the crab pot. <laughs> see that's the crab pot there. The float. And see the rope starting. And then the fish is there. I'm gonna take this camera off my head because none of you guys probably see anything anyway. Mate, there. Spooked his mate. There he is. Oh, Jesus. Oh! A couple aerials. Get the man down It's going to be a shark on him real quick. Oh my god. 360s around the crab pot. Shark 
Jackson. Jack must be on him. I think the Jack's got him. Yeah. Yeah. I, can't, I literally just took the camera off and hit that gas. Woo! Not bad, another good one. I actually spooked his mate and then he turned, he, I saw him on the live turn around and then come eat it. He literally did a jump, a 360 around the crab. Yeah, I pulled him because I knew he was going to go into it. Is it? Yeah, 91. Not, Not bad. bad at all. Let's see if I can see the prawn. Bro, right, that is so deep in there. There we go. Literally just took the camera off my head that cast, but another, another solid fish. 91. Yeah, I don't know if you can see coming out of his gills there, but that's how deep he um he got the prawn in there. It's that same little rig we found earlier, but oh, we found a spot where they're chewing and it's um it's a good feeling to get a few nibs. We've been doing it doing it tough in this series and we're getting a few now. Can't complain. Alright, we had a look on the sound to make sure the shark wasn't hanging around, so get him back quick. He's pretty, um, should be pretty good to go. Yeah. Sweet. I had to go pretty hard on that fish, but this is, uh, have a look how shredded this leader is. See if we can break it. <coughs> nah, it's still super strong. It's still stretching. That's why you want some good heavy leader. Because that is frayed to the absolute hell. He had it, obviously he saw how deep he had it down and I was going very hard because I'm very conscious about the sharks. But yeah, I had a good look on the live before we let him go and make sure the shark wasn't hanging around and he, um, yeah, he took off pretty good. So it should be fine. Like I said, there's a bunch of other boats up here as well so they could be, you know, the sharks could be hanging around anyone else's boat. So yeah, I'll just snip that frayed section off, retie and then we'll get back to casting. I should have kept the bloody camera on my head. It was a hectic fight, man. He actually, like, hadn't obviously parked up next to this crab pot. He he jumped and I pulled him and pulled him over the top of the crab pot rope so he didn't get stuck in it. It's pretty hectic. Sounds only small. Oh. oh! Never mind. Fuck off. Yeah, it's pulled hooks. I was going, like, I had my thumb on this ball. <laughs> yeah, it was like 70 anyway, 70, like mid 70s maybe. Not worth catching at that size. <laughs> um, that was a little right here. Is that a fish? <coughs> yeah, that's a fish. Um, Where's that? Oh, that's pretty good. Get him. Oh, I saw, I saw the eat. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Yeah, they're really on the move, eh? They're just coming through and... Yeah. School's very different. They had their heads into the current before. Now their heads opposite current and they're just moving. Got somewhere to be. Alright, well, the shark's back and um, the fish have stopped kind of sitting in the undulations and they're just on the move, flat out, so... I think that might be it for the day. 
Well, I'm pretty happy with how the day went. Anyway, a few, a few very nice fish, can't complain. But we've only got one more day before the weather even turns worse than this. So uh, we'll be at, back in here tomorrow morning. One more session before I don't even know and the next time we'll get out. Might be a couple of weeks, so hopefully we can make the most of tomorrow as well. We had to drive through a lot of rain uh, to get here this morning and we sat the boat around probably like 15 minutes. I'm in an hour and if we were even gonna put the boat in and end up just going, ah, stuff it, we're already here, woke up early and we've made the effort, so we may as well just dump the boat in. Um, now it looks like we're gonna be okay for a little bit on the rain side, but it's gonna be interesting to see what the river's like. Obviously the water color and clarity might have changed with the rain that we've had overnight as well as you know a temperature change as well uh might have dropped a degree or two in certain areas so uh, it'll be interesting to see if the fish are still where they were or they've moved i don't know i'm, I'm gonna start off just sounding a few areas and just see um see if i can find the fish see where they're at and then we'll go from there well after about an hour and a half of um of sounding finally found some sort of fish action it's interesting that some of the zones the fish were sitting at yesterday uh they're not sitting at anymore not uncommon for when it rains to um, get the fish on the move. But basically, we've just pulled up to this little side creek off the main river, and there's a bit of stuff flowing out, and there's a few fish sitting at the mouth of it here. So we're gonna pitch some casts in there, see if we can get some of them to bite. Oh, there's a few on this, on this bank, actually. Over, over on the right side? No, right where I'm pointing. Right. So in that little cutout, yeah. there's a few sitting in there. Oh my god, I saw that. <laughs> what the f Benjamin. You're not broke. No way. You're going on an Audi list this Christmas, Benjamin. That was like, what, 85? Oh, I don't understand how this thing gets nibbed and doesn't hook up. Didn't eat it, it's not chafed up. Well, I'm sitting here retying leader. Ben's fishing him. Have a look at what he just caught. He's got his redemption. Oh, big barra. Not quite redemption, the redemption I'd hoped for, but it's a barra. Yeah. That's why we're out here doing chasing giants. <laughs> Did you chuck him on the brag mat then? Oh, I don't know about that. It's basically a bass. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bass, man. <laughs> Alright, we've fished here for a while now and um, no more nibs besides Ben's little barra. And um, kind of been waiting for this run out tide to start kicking in um, just to see if those fish kind of stack up where we caught them yesterday. Hopefully they're there and hopefully we can catch them. Alright, so we just pulled up where we caught those couple nice fish yesterday. And seems to be a couple fish hanging around here. There's that. Yeah, that's about what you want to cast. Yep, got him. So, oh, you just pop off? No! Oh! I saw him turn and eat that. How does that even happen, man? He folded it inside out. Oh, he's such a good one as well. Cast name for ages. Finally got it right in front of his face. Ah, it's frustrating, bro. And I think after that moment, we casted for about another three to four hours and just watching fish after fish literally see our lures and swim around or literally see them and just swim completely away with the live you see a lot of things you wouldn't normally see and I just I was noticing so many different behavior changes from 
uh, the two days previously, what the fish were doing, how they were sitting, how they were moving, it all completely changed. And a combination between the wind and the rain just completely dropped the water temp. And yeah, the fish just, like I said, they were just acting different, doing different things. And I could really tell that the bite, the bite just really wasn't there. And it sucked because the weather had settled in and we had to wait almost two weeks for the next chance to get out. But um, when I got the chance to get back out, I was locked in and like I said, at the end of the last episode, from the day we had to the day we were about to have, I didn't, I really didn't expect uh, what was gonna happen.